Welcome to the Kelly Sullivan Walden Show, where we explore nighttime dreams, daytime desires, and the best ways to transform the tragic into magic. Because let's face it, we all dream, we all have our blessings, and we all have our challenges, myself included. And I don't want any of us to take any of those things lying down, if you know what I mean. I just wrote a book entitled, A Crisis is a Terrible Thing to Waste. It comes out spring of 2023. And in the meantime, I'm excited to explore the topic with you, whether it relates to your waking or sleeping dreams, because we're dreaming all the time, people. So let's make it the best dream possible. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. Welcome to the show today. I am so excited to host this wonderful guest, my friend Teresa Chung. She, I know, I met her through the Shift Networks DreamWork. Um, what did we call it? It was the it was the summit. It was the DreamWork Summit, and she just rocked my soul. Let me tell you a little bit about this amazing woman. So Teresa Chung is a modern mystic and Sunday Times best-selling dreams, astrology, spiritual, and paranormal author. Since leaving King's College, Cambridge University, with a degree in theology and English, she has written numerous best-selling books and encyclopedias, which have been translated into dozens of different languages. She's appeared on ITV this morning, Capital Radio, Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. Shout out. Channel 4, ITV, GMB Today, Extra, Russell Brand under the skin. Oh my God, I want to talk all about that. I love him so much. <laughs> and so many other shows. And she's written, um, she's written many features and been quoted in publications such as Bustle, Cosmopolitan, Good Housekeeping, In Style, Heat. Her, mis her mission is to make spirituality and the paranormal more credible, engaging, and mainstream. And you can find out more about her at TeresaChung.com. It's Teresa, C-H-E-U-N-G.com. And she has an upcoming course that is a free event at the shift network and it's on precognitive dreaming we're going to talk a little bit about precognitive dreaming and how it'll help you have the future that you want to create for yourself and a really practical approach to to the power of dreaming Teresa chung thank you so much for joining me welcome oh, kelly i just just you you are just a joy thank you so much and that lovely introduction and everything I, i'd like to meet this woman whoever she is that you're talking about she's amazing <laughs> Oh my God. And yeah, and she and I were both accused of flirting on the shift networks. We um, no, I, I, no you, you, you got away less. I was frivolous and flirtatious. Oh God. You were just flirt flirtatious. You know what I love? You are, it's really, my interpretation of this looking at you is just that you're fun. You're fun well, and so. you're scientific and you're so deeply grounded. You've got a really vast experience and you've written tons i mean i think i'm prolific but then i look at you and i'm like oh god i've barely started you are amazing well, it's so an illness. it's an illness i mean there's serial <laughs> killers and then there's serial writers like me no i i love doing it i it's my heart and soul i i, I and every book i feel like i learn more and it's interesting because i've written like for 30 years now and i go back and i think i disagree with myself now <laughs> like, <"No." laughs> I just heard that I heard the term called presentism. It's when you judge yourself yes, in yes. the past based on what that. you know now. And I do the same thing. And it's like, but at the same time, one plus one equals two doesn't invalidate higher mathematics. Like whatever we we knew 30 years ago, it's there's still something in that that was still valid, I would say. So talk speaking of, let's go back in time to what what got you into into dreams and and I don't, I'm sure, I don't know if you, you pursued becoming a dream expert, but I want to know what got you into this crazy world. Well, 
I, be, I was born into a family of psychics and spiritualists, a traveling family. You know, I was home educated. So I kind of grew up in an environment where dream decoding, astrology, I see dead people. That was just what we did. It was our, our, our community. And um, I must have had a guardian angel looking out for me because I somehow ended up at King's College, Cambridge, where I read theology. I wanted to be the first female vicar. I was so in love with with the Christian message. I still am. I think it's beautiful. But when you study, when I studied it in depth, I also studied other religions all over the world. And I began to realize they're all paths. And then from yes. that, step, I became like many people are today, spiritual, but not religious. And I then was able to leave Cambridge and use my academic credentials and research in this area to start writing encyclopedias about the psychic world, which is what I was born into. And because I was actually born into a family of people who had special gifts. Kelly, I had none. I was a big dreamer. Well, I thought at the time. You know, <laughs> and I, I wanted to be like the kid in Sixth Sense, girl. You know, I, I wanted to, to. I didn't. I was like nothing. You know, and I went to. I literally, I went to course after course. You, you name it, I did it, and nothing came through. And I actually started fibbing in courses because everybody was having these amazing psychic experiences. And I was like, yes, I can see an angel there. I couldn't. And, <laughs> But then I realized that my role was more because I believed passionately in it. It was so frustrating. I believed in it. I didn't question mm. it was real. Mm -hmm. I just didn't feel I could experience myself. And I had to go on this long journey, as we all do in life, to realize I was experiencing it in my own way. Intuition, dreams. I've always been a very big dreamer, especially since I watched The Wizard of Oz and I wanted to have that dream. <laughs> but, you know, it was dreaming. Mm that really captured me because I would wake up with very, very vivid dream recall. And a lot of these dreams started to play out as well. I would have dreams that a few days later I would recognize that from, from, you know, from the, from the dream world, it was like deja vu that I'd been there before in a dream. So in my encyclopedias, the one they did very well, they went all over the world, but the one that did really well was the element encyclopedia of 20,000 dreams, um, um, which Bella Hadid actually posted on her Instagram uh, she had an old edition. I couldn't believe it. That was just mind blowing. Um, wow. And um, so basically, although I'm called a dream expert, I really, because I'm very eclectic in my interests, I write about angels, I write about afterlife, I write about religion, I write about philosophy. All this now age, I don't call it new age, I call it now age area that people are interested in. I love that. In. But the media seized on dreaming because during lockdown, um, so many people were having vivid dreams. And I found myself because most people who, you know, had a Teresa Chung book lying around because I've written so blooming many. <laughs> and so let's call her up. And it started to happen that dreams, they wanted to talk to me because dreams are the entry point to the mystical. The way that, you know, people can talk about the inner world safely. You know, mm -hmm. the journalists, and reporters, they don't feel it's too out there to talk about I see angels or I believe in life after death. It's too out there, especially if you're going on somewhere like, you know, I do a lot of BBC radio or stuff like that. They don't want that because they're worried that it will unsettle people. However, if you talk about dreams, you can literally get away with anything. <laughs> you know? And you can have these conversations, but it's fine, yeah. it's just a dream, you know? Sorry, long answer to your question. No, that it was brilliant. Um, you said so many things I want to unpack. And and one of the very basic things is I think some there's probably maybe half or some percentage of people that come in and they really know what their gift is and they really see it and they own it and it's obvious. And I think most of us though feel sort of like you did in your family where it's kind of like no what's what's my thing but you're the fish swimming in water that's like yeah i can swim yeah i'm really good at breathing underwater but who who knows what's what's the big deal about that so i think most of us what's what's most hidden to us is our gifts and sometimes we have to do a little bit of work to explore what those things might be and then they become obvious later and i loved what you said about about um dreaming as as sort of the gateway drug <laughs> to yeah. the metaphysical to the to the psychic realm to the angels and to all of that so if people are feeling like i want to see angels i want to be psychic and how come i don't have these experiences all, everybody has dreams all yes. we have to do is just pay attention on that bridge what's one of the ways that you pay attention to dreams because I, I know that's one of the things that people talk about i don't remember dreams how do you how do you do it 
Well, I what I do is I look at my dream journal from years back because I've kept a dream journal literally since the age dot. I mean, from from a child, and I will sometimes pick them at random, and I will Mm. go back in time, and it's it's ri ridiculous. I can remember these dreams, you know. I can go back to a dream I've had when I was like seventeen. Whereas, well, if you what's what happening in my waking world? I don't, you know, because I also keep a diary, you know, I'm, I'm an avid journaler and I can't remember sometimes, oh, I met so-and-so or I did that. I, that's gone. But the dream world is there. And I, I find that a way to really trigger dream recall the following night if I'm having problems. Because we all go through periods not having dream recall. And it's often to do, I often find actually it's because I've become too external. That often it's when I'm very busy, I'm doing a lot. Like when we did the summit, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Right. Uh, right. There's too much to too much. do. Too right. Much to do. Too it's much true. We, we suddenly, weren't we? We had all this technology to deal with. Um, it was an, a, yes. an incredible thing when Shift asked us to do it. And, and if I was accused of being frivolous and flirtatious, I'm so sorry. It was nerves. Because there were these, these giants and titans of, of the dream world. And we was interviewing them and and facilitating it all so it was nerve so um i hope you go and have a look at it and, and, and laugh at Kelly i and think i think we're i mean <laughs> let's see let's see what people think i think they're going to be blown away by you and and i think the other side of frivolous is just fun and the other side of flirty is engaging so and well, maybe they are people i liked the thing yeah. is because we had to invite experts that yes inspired us so i was getting to meet my dream heroes exactly you know, so it was quite a privilege to be like ah! you know i was like gosh i've got charlie morley here what do i wear you know of course it was like, you know, <laughs> it's so true it's so true oh my head so let's i want to dive into precognitive dreams because i know that's become an area of expertise of yours as well as the it's there's a free event coming up for the shift network and i'm going to have the information posted it'll be on on my email it'll be on my blog and maybe you'll be able to give us the like a, a more concise link to be able to find it but it's coming up very soon so tell us about what what you're going to talk about in the like a little preview of what's coming up in that free event about precognitive dreaming oh thank you well um the reason i landed on precognitive dreaming as i said as a child that was potentially i didn't think of it as a gift but it was something that was happening that i would have dreams that kind of like either the mindset or the situation or the circumstances would 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 play out so it's something that is very known to me and um in my writing about dreams i have sought out scientists researching the dream world and consciousness and a running theme was this sense of precognition in dreams that in the dream state are we dreaming about potential futures and i really want to explore that and that's what this course is doing i'm going to pay great respect to the science because i do work very closely with scientists researching consciousness so i'm going to lay that out but hopefully in an entertaining way because bless them scientists are wonderful but they go on about these double blind studies and and, and all this and and most people just glaze over it's, and it's true it's true because it's so important what they're doing so i hope i can present it in a really interesting way um uh, for people and i've also you know got some vips in the course to bring in people that i really admire <laughs> and and <laughs> you know very important for cognitive um which of course you are kelly one of those oh, um, and thank scientists, you. um that i bring in to just introduce people to this emerging field of research and also how you can understand your dreams precognitively and work with them to connect with your future self so this is of course is going to be really out of this world i'm excited about it because i haven't done a course before so we're going to have fun and games together i'm very blessed because peter sterling one of the world's leading harpists has donated not donated that sounds like i'm a charity has gifted yes. <laughs> has gifted um his his beautiful harp music for some of the meditations that i will be mm. doing. so there's going to be music science 
exercises, techniques. I, I hope that it will be a very different take on dreaming. But it's not just dreaming with your eyes shut. It's also going to be about sensing the future when you're awake, because there is a lot of scientific research into presentiment, which is the body sensing the future before you do. And um, I've got the world's leading expert in presentiment doing um, a short video as well to talk about the research in that area. So long story, but in the free event, I will be doing a 12 minute meditation to music. And do forgive me if I sound a bit raspy in that everyone, because I've just had a bout of COVID. So I was doing the intro, you know, of course the team didn't know there. So forgive me if I look a bit slightly more pained than usual. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. But it, you know, luckily, when you you do something that you love i forgot about it in that hour and then when afterwards i just collapsed <laughs> you're right isn't that true tapping yeah. into the realm i think tapping into the realm of dreams tapping into the realm of passion is is definitely medicinal it definitely medicinal. yeah mm -hmm, it sure That's is right. <laughs> i know this is kind of a silly question but i get asked this a lot and i'm sure you do too where people will say how do I know if I'm having a precognitive dream? So well, you don't I until you you only recognize a precognitive dream with the benefit of hindsight. That's why you've got to write yeah. down every single dream because I'm going to be encouraging people in this this to, in this course to think like scientists. We need proof. We need data. And we can only do that if you keep a dedicated dream journal. We need at least 20 dreams to work with. That's the only way we're going to find out the precognitive elements in your dreams. And I'm really grateful with the course actually that we start, we'd have one lesson and then we break for two weeks for Thanksgiving because you need, the participants need to go away and dream for me. We need material oh. to work with. So um, yeah, you can only know in hindsight, but once you start recognizing the rules and principles of precognitive dreaming, it becomes much easier in the morning to wake up and know this is potentially something I need to look out for because you need to learn your personal symbols and you know what elements in a dream are pointing that way. As I've repeatedly said in all the research I've done on dreaming now, I'm beginning to think that all dreams have precognitive elements. And that's nothing to be frightened of, it's something to celebrate because the future is a potential that you can change if you don't like the way it's heading and your dreams are pointing you in the direction of where it's heading if you don't change your mindset. <clears throat> Interesting. I, I I agree with you. And I know there's I was talking with um, a client the other day who has a lot of precognitive dreams and she was saying, but what about the ones that I can't do anything about like the September 11th, the, yeah. the towers coming down. She was one of those people that had dreams during yeah. that time. And so what do you say about that? If it's something across the world, if it's a tsunami, if it's some kind of a cataclysm, what what do you do? It's very well reported that people before 9-11, before the Titanic, before great disasters, do. Mm -hmm. there's plenty of data to suggest that's the case. And that is why in the past, when I've done dream dictionaries, like my big, I, I've avoided the precognitive element. However, I feel that I can no longer do that because it, so many people write to me about it and there's so much data. If that happens, there's nothing you can do. It's not your fault. You, there, you can write it down. You can alert people and then leave it. There's nothing you can do. It's not your fault if it plays out, but the ethics of it, I will be talking through as well. And, you know, there is, um, within the scientific community, there is a desire to create a database for people to submit if they've had these dreams so that you can get it off your mind and release it. You know, if it's something that's so external that there's nothing you can do about, all you can do is write it down, maybe submit it to the various links that I will be giving to people because there are databases now places like ions the institute of noetic science they actually have a precognitive dream database for people to do that to get it off their mind and their conscience mm. mm. right mm. um if it's a personal situation though however and it involves people you love and care about you can potentially talk to them about it that's all you can do you can just mm -hmm. put it out there and just let it go that's the hardest part of precognitive dreaming right i I completely agree. I always, um, I was literally talking to somebody last night about the perspective. She was sort of arguing with me about the Jungian perspective that 
everything and everyone in the dream is an aspect of the dreamer. And I tend to, I don't, I don't hold anything religiously. I don't think anything has to be, this is exactly how it must be all the time. But I do f personally find a bit of empowerment, even if it's a bitter pill to swallow. So for example, um, I did once have a tsunami dream and it was right before there was tsunami-ish kind of big waves happening in Santa Monica, the beach by near where I live. And um, it didn't, so if in my working with it, it's kind of like, all right, I might not be able to do anything about the ocean, but I can do something about my inner ocean and about my inner tsunami and maybe maybe it's because i haven't been letting myself cry when i've needed to maybe i have a lot of emotion that has been kind of tanking up and it's kind of there's an explosion that's waiting to happen what if so is there a way that we can in some way work on it internally even if we know this isn't about me this is about someone else but is it ever a little bit about us it's and is there something we can us. do it's always about us. You're absolutely right. I mean, we are dreaming about aspects of ourselves as well. And dreams can be interpreted on many levels. Yeah, I would say that's 99.999% of dreams that is this tiny category of supernormal dreams, which defy that. Yes, are, I agree. I would say afterlife dreams, psychic dreams, telepathic dreams. Those are ones that we need to be tuned into as well. And to not, you know, they have they have great potential but not to be frightened of them because they are a sign that we are connected to everyone outside of us as well right <laughs> you know, um and you know as you say what's going on in the world is also going on within us you know it's this interconnection between the inner and the outer i mean i haven't got all the answers i'm learning as i go but i'm just looking at the science and the data and precognitive dreaming is a thing it yes really and knowing that how can you make it a personal growth tool how can you make it a personal growth tool that's what i want to help people understand and not to fear it right also to celebrate it because it is incredible that people are picking up on something could it not show us that we are connected on a level that we don't understand to mm. everything and everyone it is a cause for celebration not fear Right. I mean, it It seems like one of the things that I love about dreams is the empowerment aspect, because mm -hmm. I there's there's only what's in my lane that I have any control over at all. And there's ninety nine point nine percent of the rest of the world that I don't have any control over. But if I if I work on a dream internally and if I if I can embrace that and do my own alignment with that, then maybe that does affect the rest. Maybe there is something. So I think even like you said, even if it's not a dream that we can, we can stop a tsunami, we can stop a 9-11 from happening. The fact that we've tapped into it Very means that we have some connectedness to this larger world. And that is, that is empowering. And maybe, maybe if there's a, if there's a glimmer of gold, even in a very, very difficult dream like that, it could be maybe to that, that you just had a rehearsal for something awful so that when it actually does come to play, you'll be a little bit more prepared. And absolutely, if it's yeah, abs absolutely. But it's also a reminder that you are so much more mysterious than you yes. realize and so much within you that you don't yet understand. It's, it's a cause for real reflection and, yeah. and, and empowerment because, you know, these dreams do happen where people are picking up on future events that play out. Yeah. This is incredible. It also shows that we have our concept of time is something that is so needs reworking, you know, that our past, present and future self are kind of existing all at the same time, you know, our, the idea of our long body over time and that you can connect to your future self just as you can connect to your past self. You know, it's, 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 mind-blowing when you think about it in that way and it's exciting it, again i don't want people to fear it this ability mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but it, it, it is something that is really worth studying really worth investigating and it is a bit of a neglected area in dream work because people yeah. are frightened of it but i i'm i'm going there <laughs> is there do you have um an experience from your own 
world where you had a precognitive dream yourself that made a difference that that stands out to you that you'd be willing to share yeah. about or I mean yeah I mean I I have trivial ones you know where yeah. Uh, you know, like you mentioned Russell Brand. I dreamt yes. about Russell Brand a few days before. Now, Russell Brand is not someone who, this was way back. I mean, this was like 20, oh. 2019. I, he's, you know, I know many, I think about many celebrities, I guess, but he's never been someone that's triggered me or that I fixated on. He's not Leonardo DiCaprio now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, know. honey, I'll set you up. <laughs> He's, he's who I would have liked to have had. <laughs> he was like sitting in a waiting room with me and he was very kind and very hospitable. I thought, what's this? So I wrote it down literally the day or so after I got a call under the skin, right? And this was my first actually, because before that I'd rich, literally been someone behind the desk. I'm an academic really at heart. I'd have been very happy to stay at Cambridge in the library and never go out and just write book after book that nobody reads. But you know, that's, that's, that would have been me. And he, his was the first time that I actually went out into the world. You know, I've Ooh. only been doing this for like a couple of years, but prior to wow. that, I didn't even want to go online. I, I didn't like it. I had other people doing my social media and he brought me out, but I thought it was an audio only podcast. So I dressed all black and, and actually I didn't realize because he was starting to do visual as well with it. And under the skin was really, really growing. And I suddenly went into this studio and it was like camera. And I thought, oh my, you know what it's like? Oh my. <laughs> uh, I, thought it was swan. I was wearing a dying swan. I'd gone for the goth look. You know, it's terrible. <laughs> if you want to have a laugh, everyone, it's still up there on his YouTube. It's the funniest thing because I'm literally I'm... like a rabbit in headlights. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, this is Russell Brand. And I'm. Absolutely. I mean, I found myself quoting Patrick Swayze from Ghost. <laughs> I love it. What'd you say? I don't know. Cause he was talking about, you know, cause I was trying to talk about the science and the afterlife and I was saying, yes, but the love inside you take it with you, Molly. And he, he <laughs> thing is he was cruel. He could see that I was completely and it's car crash, but it became one very popular because of that, because it's unintentionally funny. Um, but it did a great lot because I'm quite a sensitive person, you know, I reacted and he was eating grapes in the microphone and I found it all very, very overwhelming. And uh -huh. that is so evident in there. And it's oh, a very so funny nice. watch. And it's Russell Brand, <laughs> as you know him as a comedian, because he said mm -hmm. he because I'd, I'd written a book with a scientist called The Premonition Code. Again, my interest in precognition. Mm -hmm. I've written it with a neuroscientist. And um, that was quite something to do, a mystic and a neuroscientist writing together to create this book. And I think he actually thought that the neuroscientist was coming in. I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs> he's like hitting me like, where's the site? And I'm going, well, the double split experiment. <laughs> you know? um, and he soon realized that what I was. And, he, and, and, and then at the end, it's really funny because we come, we are like polar opposites. But by the end, there's a it's lovely and in the end he's hugging me and everything and it's very sweet you can oh, see sweet. complete like he doesn't know who i am i don't think he read the brief of who i am i don't know maybe <laughs> he did but it's, it's funny 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 okay well i can't wait to see that and then what happened actually he recorded it like i think in november time and I thought that's never going to go out. It's the worst interview ever. And I remember going out and there was on the board, Marianne Will Williamson, you know, <gasps> yes, Teresa Chai. I was like, is this a joke? You know, <laughs> and I think he was thought, is this a joke? And I thought, this is never going out. Cause I'm not, I'm not an A-lister in any way. I, I, I you are now. Yes, you are. <laughs> Yes, you are. Then, you are thought, Teresa and Chung. I, and I actually sent him a card apologizing. Um, Cause I actually mentioned one of my forgotten literary classics called psychic cats, which he just literally was on the floor laughing about. <laughs> um, and, 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 and then he, I remember the grapes fell off the table and I told him off, I went into mother mode and for eating off the floor. I mean, it was literally that, you know, we've had oh, that's great. interviews of Marianne Williamson level. And then you get that. And I thought, there's no way it's a joke. It's not because we actually live quite close to each other here in the UK. So six months went by and I thought, because I literally, I had stomach pains and everything. I thought I've made a complete, that I have to leave the country when that interview goes out. That's what I did. <laughs> and they didn't tell me. And then suddenly my phone blew up. It was on. <gasps> Cause they literally probably, maybe they had a quiet week. And <laughs> it's the funniest interview ever. 
but it did a lot of good because I, I was able to wow. talk about these topics. And, people and get it through mainstream. Very, yeah. And then after that, I got more and more. So I'm very grateful to, to, to Mr. Brand. I'm not in touch with him in, or any way, but I'm very grateful that he gave me that. And he decided to put it out there. I love it. Um, <laughs> I'll never think of grapes in the same way ever again. If you ever watch, if you do want to laugh. I'm know, going to. I'm going to do it right drop. away. The, oh. the backdrop um, of, of someone. And, and then, of course, now, you know, several years later, I've got much more comfortable with it. I do ITV and everything. But it, it, he, it was the first time ever in front of a camera, really. And oh, it was my gosh. God. And I'm literally a rabbit in the headlights. <laughs> My son was laughing and, and oh and god! But that's a long story short. But I'm very grateful because we did talk about dreams somewhere in there. We did talk about the afterlife. We did that's talk wonderful. about the of consciousness. We got there in the end. That's um, the whole. That's the whole thing is to make the metaphysical accessible yeah. in yeah. to the masses and to have there be some entertainment value, which is one of the reasons why I love you because you are deeply grounded in in the academics of it all and you do have a yeah. very strong connection to the science and you have your own intuition your own experience and you're hilarious and you're fun Getting and there. i am i'm so excited about your course your your precognitive I'm somebody is i hope that People I'm excited. That. I want to know about the cats. Precognitive <laughs> dreaming. It's a free online event. Okay, how can people sign up? What's the link? What's the best way? I well, actually, I have one here. It's a little bit long. Yeah. Um, I might make a tiny URL of it. I'll make it um, tinyurl.com forward slash Teresa Precognitive. That's what I'm going to oh, make it. Teresa, Teresa with an H Precognitive. Thank you. That's very, so, that's very kind of you, 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 you yeah. Kelly. And I know you've also done a course yourself with the shift, so you're a pro. I did the way of the awakened dreamer. It was, it was great. It was a lot of fun to do. And I'm so, and I wouldn't have met you otherwise. I'm so grateful for this path. It's it I, for anybody who's watching and or listening, who's feeling like, well, what's my path and what's my psychic gifts and what's my thing. You know what? Sometimes they sneak up on you. It's maybe ask other people around you. What What do you think my gifts are? Because sometimes the other people around us know better than we do. And maybe if just... all else fails, Kelly, become a dream expert. <laughs> and, you know, if you cross every other thing off the list at the bottom of the barrel, who's <laughs> being a dream expert? Because, hey, we all dream. So <laughs> We're all experts on our own dreams. Oh my God! It's such fun when you 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 know you know I love what you do because you bring humor into it as well and I think that's so important because if you're not laughing and enjoying it, what is the point? It shouldn't be deadly serious. I mean, that's one thing I was concerned. You know, when I was doing the Shift Network, I felt I had to be terribly serious, buttoned up. That, yeah, yeah, and that yeah. there's a time and a place, of course, for that. You, you know, there's some topics that are not laughing matters, but I do think it, there needs to be a light touch. I mean, angels can fly because they take themselves lightly, you, don't they? What's that Chesterton? Is it Chesterton quote? I could, uh, angels can fly because they take themselves they lightly. they take themselves lightly. You yeah. totally read my mind. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. So as we are closing, which on a parallel plane will never close, will never be done because we're just going to keep on talking on a parallel Zoom <laughs> in, the, in the realm of the angels and the gods. But in the meantime, I'd love it if there's any final... I'm, you are the queen of the best quotes on the planet that relate to dreams and the metaphysics and the angels, any quote from some other brilliant being or from your own heart, what's a message that you'd like to, to leave us with today? Well, dreams never lie, you know? Um, dreams never lie, they're your best friend, right? We all go through periods in our life and we feel a bit lonely, even if you're in a relationship, sometimes you can feel alone and I've found with my dreams that I've got a best friend there, someone to hold my hand all the time and tell me like it is and what I need to know. And we all crave, don't we, having a friend like that who, who's always there for you, always filled with unconditional love and always wants the best for you because your dreams, even the nutty ones and the ones with vampires and snakes and whatever, they still doing it because of tough love. You know, we're doing it because it's tough love. So, you know, make friends with your dreams. When you feel low, pour into your dreams, pour yourself into your dreams. They will hold your hand and get you through 
difficult times because that's happened to me many many a time and that's why i'm so passionate about as you are kelly about promoting this dream power you know a message mm -hmm. to the world and mm. um, you know you whatever age or stage in life you are as well you've got your dreams you, absolutely they, they've got your back they've got your back Yes, they do. Teresa Chung, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. And everyone, check out her podcast, White Shores with Teresa oh, yeah. Chung. It's so good. And um, and her website is TeresaChung.com. It's C-H-E-U-N-G. And it's That's Teresa good. with an H. So T-H-E-R-E-S-A, C-H-E-U-N-G dot com right. and and the shift network course is precognitive dreaming that's coming up so sign up for the free event and then after you've heard the free event and you've participated in that you're going to want to sign up for the full course highly recommend it Teresa chung thank you for being my sister from another mister my my <laughs> <laughs> my partner in crime and dreams and yeah. i appreciate you so much and thank you russell brand for being smart enough to put Teresa on the map so that we you brought basically thank you russell for bringing Teresa into my life well <laughs> i don't know if that's a nightmare or a dream but it's anyway. a dream it's a dream so thank you so much and until we all meet again don't take your dreams lying down thank you for listening to the kelly sullivan walden show if you enjoyed this episode take a moment to like subscribe comment and share it with your friends my show can be found on Apple iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. If you want to pre-order my new book, A Crisis is a Terrible Thing to Waste, go to your favorite online or brick and mortar retailer, then head on over to kellysullivanwalden.com tragic to magic. Input your order number and redeem your bonus gifts. I'm also excited to be offering a new live DreamWork practitioner training. So if that calls to you, go to kellysullivanwalden.com forward slash DreamWork. If you'd like to join me for the live recording of these shows, most Wednesdays at noon Pacific, you can find me on Facebook at Kelly Sullivan Walden Dreams. If you have a question about your dreams or about how to transform your tragic into magic, email me at kelly at kellysullivanwalden.com. Until next time, remember, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. And as you awaken to the power of your dreams, you make the world a lighter, brighter, more beautiful place, one dream at a time. Sweet dreams.